Thank you, Mr. Kaurav, for giving us a perception of the private industry. It is very important for all of us and it is very encouraging to hear that you are very perturbed by the new government policies. Now, for the final part of the presentation, I request Janet Sivich, who as the chairman of the study group, to give us an overview of the recommendations. Janet Sivich. Thank you, Rahul. Uh, we come on to the last part of the presentations. And uh, I must say, there appears to be a revolution in the revision of the DPPs. But I'm glad the DPP 2013 is going to be replaced soon by the DPP 2014. Because there is a requirement, as I said earlier, also for the bold initiatives and the open dialogues. OK, moving on to this part, uh, firstly, the ensuring high degree of preparedness. We've already talked of that. And the three aspects which are very important are the aspects of observation and maintenance. And besides this, the setting up of national defense industrial base. But what makes that happen is the budget, the basic requirement. Now the budget this year has gone up by about 15 percent and it is around 38.2 billion. But what you get really for the acquisition, capital acquisition is around 13 billion. And 13 billion is 78,000 crores and that is not too much of money. That is not too much of money because our approximate requirement, if you look at the Army, the Navy and the Air Force, the figures I have given here works out to 150 billion dollars. And all this information is from the open sources. It may be much more because of the uh, the way the rupee has uh, been devalued. Okay. Now, if that be so, the strategic window of element to us is approximately 8 to 10 years. If you look at the way the Chinese are modernizing their oil forces, and they will be ready in a certain span of time, that's around 8 years. Now, if that be the time, so what we need really every year is approximately 15 billion dollars over and above what is being given in the budget. Now, that kind of money is required and also the ability to absorb that money. The procurement procedures have to be such which are uh, able to give you the capability to absorb that money. Like as was mentioned by my previous speakers, you got to develop that kind of our faith and trust in your own industry and also in the people who are going to apply these procedures. Okay, moving on to the next thing. Uh, Indigenization level playing field has been talked of uh, liberally, the point is you want a level playing field for the private sector on par with the DRBO and the PSU. It's a fundamental requirement. Look at both of them as your own people and don't make a distinction between the two. There is a requir requirement of that. Also, there is a requirement to shift your attitude from a seller buyer relationship to that of oneness, that we are all one. Okay. Now, principally, the observation maintenance that will be carried out by the industry are glad this has been put down in the DPP because the defense organizations themselves don't have that kind of capability to handle uh, this in a large scale. For maintenance and serviceability, also they were looking at the private sector as subjective Indian partners. Very good. It is required. Otherwise, uh, you will not be able to have the kind of uh, maintenance which we are required and the serviceability rate will not be high. Loan facility for the MCEME, these are required and this is, the, this is the starting fund and there will be much more as on the requirement basis. Now, three things which have been put down to save all the trouble in future and these have been the source of problems, the SQRs, the uniform fraternity and the ones who now within the service earlier, we all know that SQRs have to be frozen before acceptance of SST. Very important. Number two, no request for proposal will be floated unless the SQR is frozen. And lastly, the time reduction is required in the acceptance of SST from two to one year so that everyone is on his toes and you are getting the things on the move. Okay, deviation by DPP, the last defense minister said that if there should be any deviation from the DPP 
it should be done by the DSC and not the defense minister. I think he was very happy on that kind of an arrangement and it will help the system, no doubt about it. It will bring in more transparency. Developing skill for dealing with the defense procurement and industry very important. You see, what is happening today is that we have officers and the bureaucrats dealing with them on the tenure basis. And especially in the army, we have a bigger problem than the navy and the air force, where they have more stable life. Our people are moving on to the next job at a rather fast speed. For that reason. It is desirable that we develop a system, something like the U.S., where they have a skilled brain power of about a lag of 45,000 all the time available. If not at that scale, at least at some scale, we must work the system out so that people can be both the service fraternity and also the bureaucrat are well trained for the entry cases which have been put down here of the job. Transparency, very important and I am glad that the e-procurement has been recommended by the uh, study group uh, and also it's not in the DPP and also the present government has talked of it. So I suppose this system will be put into work. Secondly, if you want everything to be put down on the website, there is nothing hushed about the services procurements. Everyone knows about them, so it better to be out in the open. And then have discussion with your stakeholders. It's very important. I think Mr. Cora also made a mention of it that even DPP 2014, the kind of dialogue which is required, that is lacking. It is required to discuss with the stakeholders. Now, cancellation of defense deals. We are strongly of the view, and this is a study group recommendation, not in the DPP 2013, that cancellation of the defense deals at the final stages are built midway through is most counterproductive as it was happening till last year very frequently. It is not desirable at all. It delays the acquisition altogether and also it makes the people lose faith in India and people stop doing business with India for that reason. And lastly, I think it is better to impose heavy fines on a company or an organization rather than blacklisting it. Offsets. Uh, J.P. Singh talked at length about it and it was very important that the Dom W, which is a major uh, stakeholder in this, is well staffed and they have been given the uh, ability to analyze the matters. DPP 2013 talks about the uh, certain, there are requirements to bring in certain uh, changes which are not in the DPP 2013. One of them is the core technology. Sorry. One of them is the core technology, and second is the uh, OEMs, and thirdly, there is the requirement to bring in more clarity on the what is transfer of technology. Actually, what we are doing today is really uh, the aspect of uh, license production. What is transfer of technology must be understood. I think you will have a short your question on this subsequently. Uh, right now there is a requirement, I think now what is being done is license production. Now what is required in the future? That the DRDO works on the technology themselves and also the DRDO works on the core technology. And secondly the private sector should also come into it and start looking at the technologies themselves. And some of this can be imported from outside. And not that you start looking at the entire technology being given to you by the foreigners, they will not do it. That must be understood. And the next side is on the bipartisan approach to defense preparedness. That's a major recommendation by the uh, study group and the something which has not been first thought of frequently by anyone. And that is why we feel that you know, technology and the other aspects and the defense preparedness is all a matter of your national preparedness. And it cannot be just left to the government. So the entire set of people should be involved in this. And for that reason, I think there's a requirement to move away from the partisan considerations. And also we felt 
that the national security perspectives and preparedness levels will, should be shared by the opposition, major opposition parties, so that they are aware of that and they don't put spokes into things when you want to do that. And let it not be, a, as I said, a hush hush affair. And I feel, and we in the study group felt, that the chief should be asked to make a pro, uh, presentations to this CCS and also including the leaders of the opposition major parties and uh, also the chairman of the parliamentary uh, standing committee uh, twice a year biannually and that should include your preparedness level and it should also include your uh, readiness level. And uh, don't be surprised about it, it is being done in the US. All the chiefs made presentation to the Senate committee twice a year. Of course, in camera, it is not to be shared with the public at large. But at least the entire leadership of the country must be aware as to what kind of preparedness have we achieved. Maybe it will do some good in the long run. On one slide I have missed out which I want to just spot if I can find that. Uh, yeah, foreign direct investment, it has been talked of. And this is the recommendation of the study group. And it's a very strong recommendation of the study group. The last government had talked of the at the DPD 2013, it talked of the FDI only up to 25%. And they were not ready to go beyond that in the belief that anything beyond that will hinder your own industry's capabilities to improve. Well, that was their belief, but we felt that no country could part with its technology without substantial gain. And in any case, not all their technology. And it is that technology which we want the DRDO to develop rather than changing the entire wide mirage. So for that is the benefit that the FDI should be raised up to 49%. I am glad that the present government has also agreed to that and they have announced it. Now we also feel that in specific exceptional cases it should be raised to 75%. But in that case you should also look at setting up of the regulatory body to ensure that genuine transfer of technology has taken place. That is very important. And it is not the kind of a license production which we have been talking so much of, about. So that is very important but there is a very large set of people who are talking of 100% FDI to be brought into this field like the insurance sector. So that is not all uh, in the entire presentation. Now we finished with the set of uh, presentations. We will have now the question and answer session for you and give you around 20 25 minutes so that the services fraternity are in a position to catch their bus in time and finish this by between 4.50 to 4.30. Okay, I will request the study group to please come for this day. The entire show. Just hold. We are all coming up. Apart from the services fraternity catching the buses, I have to catch a flight. So you will be looked after well on that account just for you. It's our job to make sure that you can get this.